You are listening to the Global Psychosis Network. I knock on the window, Adam's like, nah, dude, I'm fucking just gonna chill. I'm like, what are you doing, dude? You don't want to fucking hang out? No, nah, I got some programming to do. I'm like, programming? What the fuck is that, dude? <laughs> and like back then, he was like making little programs to fucking, I don't know what they were doing, like hacking fucking AOL yeah. accounts or some shit. Yeah. And I was just thinking like, why the fuck do you want to do that? What's, what are you ever going to do with that shit? It's so yeah. worthless. What a worthless, boring hobby. And, and now then fast forward. Yeah, fast look forward. Him, he's fucking, got his own house. Yeah, you fast forward it fucking years later and like that's what everyone fucking needs is some fucking yeah. programmer. Yeah, that uh If it didn't bore me to tears, I would have fucking jumped on it. But shit, back in that era too, like in in 95, 96, 97, a lot of us we were doing shit like that, but like the little hack the planet crap and we were we had all the little programs where we ran around AOL causing havoc, punning people and sending mail bombs and freezing computers and and not to implicate myself or anything, but like things like Trojan horses and stuff, they developed way back then. And uh, the programming was simple enough to where all you needed was a hex editor. And you would open up something that your virus scanner would catch as a Trojan horse, which means it's a password stealer. And, and back, back in that day, uh, they weren't as advanced to be stealing like credit cards and stuff. They were, but like the shit that we were. We were fourth and fifth and sixth graders but even even so we were able to get people's AOL accounts and straight up by by being a menace and 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 back then we would advertise illegal shit people would want to download it movies programs little things and what it was is you would you would get like these little trojan horses and you would open up a hex editor which would be basically a program like you would you would take any program on your computer and e- a .exe file open it up with the hex editor and boom, you would have just all this code. We didn't know what the fuck it meant, okay? But you would look for specific things, and you would go through, and your little search, you would do a search in the code, and you would put .com or 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 .net or whatever, and it would go through the the programming and find that within the code, and you would find someone's email address, okay? And we would, and and what that was is that email address was where people's passwords were being sent to. You would type it in. If you had this programming running on your computer, you type your password in AOL. It would record it and send it to this email address, and boom, you would have passwords. So what you would do is you would get these programs and change the email address in the hex editor to your email address, or you would obviously make like a Juno account, which is some old school shit. Juno, Juno email, and um, I'll have to ask Jeeves about that one. Juno is is pretty pretty old school, but it's cool. And, uh, and basically you, you thought, and back then you probably were, you were untraceable. Um, IP addresses and shit were harder to come by and tracking people. But anyways, you would just go on AOL and go through these Juarez rooms and pirate rooms and offer these people different shit. And they would download it, run it on their computer. Sometimes it would be an actual program that worked. And they would be running it and using it every day, not knowing that at the same time they had this little password stealer on their shit. And every time they would go into their shit, it would send you an email of their username and password. And uh, and that's like the beginning of like just that whole the Trojan horse phase. I just got my Hotmail account hacked a couple of days ago. Did you? And the only thing I ever use this Hotmail account for is like Craigslist ads. To like you know for job opportunities and whatnot, yeah. I just forward my res- my resume and my business card to that, and for whatever reason that information was very valuable to them. There's nothing on there besides you know here you go like here's my resume, and uh, basically I, like I get prompts on my iPhone that say you know I got a new email, I got a new email for any sort of response for those different accounts, and I had no response or I had I had no like you know notifications for like a day or two, and my phone's always going off with email alerts, so I'm like what the fuck dude. So I go on there and it's like, oh, you know, um, your email's not working or whatever. So I go online and I, you know, I sign on from there and fucking there's all these like automated fucking like mail delivery status failures and fucking all these forwarded emails from people on my list and shit. And I'm like, what the fuck? So I looked at it and uh, I don't know how it happened, but my only guess is like there's probably people on Craigslist that you know they put out a fake job opportunity like hey we're looking for this looking for that and then people apply to it with their email and they have some sort of like email fucking stealer or some shit so it just goes into their fucking little program oh, yeah. it's only i can think of because I, I don't use that email for anything else besides right. craigslist and somehow they hacked it so i had to fucking change my password and they fucking blocked my account so for a fucking day or two i was trying to get that shit fixed and yeah. sorted 
And uh, yeah, all those people that if I forwarded you some spam mail, my bad. That's, <laughs> then that's what it is. That's the value of that is that you're in a cr- that's your email, and you use that to send this to some cr- accredited people. Maybe people high in the music in- industry, video industry, anything, right? Maybe they saw some hint of that. Who who knows? But what it comes down to is that they could hack your email, use your email account, start sending them any kind of spam or any kind of Trojan horses, passwords, stealers, um, viruses, shit that they could send that if this guy opens it up, it fucking infects his computer or it gets them money somehow. But they know that you're an accredited person and that people that they're going to spam right now and just send mass emails out to are going to go, oh, this is James Trashy. I, oh, what is it? Oh, okay, I like this guy. Or like, oh, my buddy James just sent me a mail. Of course I'm going to open it. And they open it, and they're like, what What the hell is he talking about? Oh, okay, J- this is James. I'll, I'll see what he's talking about. Boom, they click it. Boom, infect their computer. All that. That's that's where that comes into play is just, but it's, in the end, just like, you, they don't know. that That's just your little fucking petty work thing, and you really, in the end, it ain't. Yeah. You you don't have any contacts on there that are really valuable. It was a minor annoyance, least. but other yeah. than that, I was just whatever, you know. Yeah, that's what people do. I actually applied just for I just recently applied for a job to be a porn editor. Nice. And uh basically just edit porn clips all day. Yeah. <laughs> and um they just Dude, said that's awesome. the only requirement is to be comfortable with editing that ma- that kind of material. Right. It's be like, able to professionally. Do I might that have to take for... a lot of breaks and clean up, but other than that, <laughs> it should be pretty simple, you know. That that's cool, dude. Like I'll I'll be honest with you. Um, you know, before I got into the uh, video game industry, and I was really really in depth with my uh, web design and graphic design back then. I uh, I applied for a couple porn sites, like big name porn sites and stuff like that, and um, they that the honest truth is is like a lot of those dudes are really qualified. They were more qualified than, or they were looking for people more qualified than I was because I I took about two or three phone interviews for porn sites and stuff like that, and and I thought I maybe even could have got the job, but. Uh, I ended up getting my job at Vivendi and, and stuff, and after that, well, first it was Square Onyx, and then something happened with my background check, and uh, and then I, I was kind of like, God, I got to get into a video game company now, because the first one was so easy, and I got into Vivendi, but I was very close to working for a porn site, uh, be doing gra- um, more so web design than graphic design, but also trying to get graphic design jobs too. This is in my heyday of web and graphic design, where now I'm not, I'm pretty much out of the loop. Everything's changed, but you use Dreamweaver, right? I use Front Page and Dreamweaver and Photoshop and Macromedia, all Macromedia programs and Flat Macromedia Flash and Fireworks and all that shit. I was using all that for a long time, and I was self-taught. You know, I did that all on my own, just experimenting and fucking around. When I was a little kid in middle school, in high school, in college, and then, you know, before I had to pay bills and and eat. And I have Dreamweaver now. Yeah. Before when I was talking about using the programs and shit, yeah. I was using that shitty little PC, but uh, I have the whole entire Adobe suite now, mm-hmm. which comes with all these different programs. I'm sure you know most of them. Yeah. But, uh, like, I never got that .com off the ground, so I like to, like... One of these yeah. days, have you come by and... Because I'm sure you'll pick it up quicker and, like, anything... Because I'll sit there for an hour or two, just like, how the fuck do I open this goddamn fucking folder up, you know? Right. Whereas, like, the basics... I think once I get the basics down, then the other shit I can just fucking Google. But it frustrates me to not even know how to do the simplest shit on that program. Yeah. So, um, I don't know. One of these days, like, you come by so we could yeah get that fucking website cracking so my computer's been down for so long you know like and, and just over the last six months it's been down i've lost so much just so much like experience and just fucking with my computer and keeping up to date with windows 7 and all that <clears> bullshit <throat> that you know like i'm uh i've been just like shitty and out of the loop for a long time but um when it comes down to like even the macro media and front page web design graphic design I, I, w- I wanted to, what I wanted to do is I knew a lot of it. I knew the basics. I knew how to do a lot of shit. And I wanted to, I wanted to go to school though for it and just like take official classes, 
have someone do shit like and it, it would have been easy for me you know i'd be like oh yeah i know this blah 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 and get through it and just have an official degree because as far as when i was trying to get jobs and shit for it i had minor portfolios and and different shit like that but like it was just the lack of a certificate or degree that would usually lead them to pick someone else over me that w and that was like i said that was what i was doing a long time before i got into the video game industry and and whatnot so if you go to scrock they have courses on that you could probably knock that out in like six yeah, weeks and then... i would and I, and that, that would be cool but yeah that's something that i need to get my shit together with here soon and hopefully we'll we'll see Yeah, I've been, um, I mean, I, that's one of those things I've been wanting to pursue is web design, but I only have so much time in a day, and, like, my main priority is music, and then right behind that, maybe even above that is video shit, but to me, like, I want to do music video, so, music video editing, so music's gotta go first, but video, yeah. I have a really strong passion for video editing now, so you put music and video together, and then it's like, there's not much time for anything else. Yeah. Maybe after I have a bunch of content out there, because I have just that first album and then my EP I did last year. I'm still working on the, um, you know, 15 track LP for this year. It's almost done, and then once I start cracking out the videos for that one, and I have a bunch of, I'll have like probably close to 35 songs out there on the net. Um, from that point, I'll have a lot of material to possibly start that dot com and just fucking just flood that fucking website with fucking all kinds of stuff I've been doing. But yeah. in the meantime, it's kind of been put on the back burner. But I know I need to put that shit out there already as like kind of like a calling card. It, it looks really professional to have that dot .com when people want to know who you are, you know? Yeah, it does. It's a necessity. But we'll get that shit cracking. We will one day. But, um, yeah. Aside from that, I don't know what the fuck else is going on in the world today. Besides our, <clears throat> <laughs> besides our personal fucking graphic and web design um, end of ours. Um, what the fuck's that guy's name? Never mind, I forgot the guy's name already. It's some fucking <laughs> some guy. What? Some guy died today. Well, I can't remember his fucking name. It's what did like, he do? He just was old. He was just an old. <laughs> he was guy? ninety-five years old, but he was like really well known in Hollywood and shit. Was he a movie star? Yeah, he was an actor. I can't. I just fucking read it today. I can't remember his fucking name, dude. Uh -huh. Well, fuck it's that. It's like, dude, it's gonna bug the shit out of me now. Yeah, now it's bugging me too. He's one of those actors that was in a bunch of shit. I think he was in Basketball. The, you know, the uh, Trey Parker, Matt Stone flick. The guy who, um... Really old guy. His name's... The fucking... guy who was dating Jenny McCarthy? I think so. Might have been. And the I mean, in Basketball. Yeah. But... I'm, I'm trying to think of his name, dude. If he said his name... I, um, I, I don't I... even know. I could picture the guy, but I can't even remember his fucking name. He's got like a... It's a really weird name. It's, like, hard to pronounce and I shit. Just, I just realized that. I just said fucking name, and I realized that for a trashy podcast, we haven't been cursing that much. It's been very pg oh, the, teen the, oriented the, the last podcast I did, I was so shit-faced with Steve. I was saying fucking and shit, like, every other word. <laughs> and I was, like, the very beginning, I was, like, so here we got another podcast, and my guest today is going to be Steve. should have done that a while ago, but <laughs> here we are today. I was so fucking hammered, dude. <laughs> when was that? Uh, was that last week or something? It was like last week. I already put it on the net. I was going to put the one with you and Scott Gatesford on, but the microphone setup was fucked up. So um, that's I think that's one of the important things of having the headphones on because you can kind of gauge how loud you're being. Yeah. I so was saying the cadence of your voice, but also yeah. I noticed now it has a lot to do with how loud you are because if you listen to it, um, there's certain, like Scott sounded cool because he was further away from the mic. Yeah. But then when you get on it, it gets really loud. And then when I'm on it, I'm really loud so too. So it's too fucking hard to edit. Yeah, I'd have to, like, compress the fuck out of it. Right. And it just wouldn't have been worth it. I mean, I could probably still use it if people don't mind listening to, like, really fucking altered yeah. levels of volume. I don't remember what we were talking about on that one. 